everybody, it's Tina, Tina Stitches. Welcome to my channel. I am coming at you from my craft room slash spare room, and there is construction going on in the room next door, so you might hear some banging. Getting the last window in, so I'm not going to stop them. There's snow on the ground. We need to get this done. Um, I would help more, but I think that I would just be in the way. Um, so, I have one dog in here with me, and the other one is moping outside that bedroom door because that's her daddy. So, uh, what have I been up to? It's been three weeks. Three weeks since my last video, and I did not mark down what day that video actually was. I'm pretty sure it was a Sunday. Three weeks ago, so I'm guessing that um, I'm guessing that I worked on Hatter more since you last saw it. So I will show that again. I've also worked on Sunflower Fairy a little bit started a new project, magazine challenge, Sal made me do it, um, beloved, and Crystal Christmas. So, I've been trying to do the, um, acrostics for both Magazine Sal and for uh, 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, but I haven't posted any pictures. And um, anyways, um, for the Magazine Acrostic, the word was ghost. I had to come up with projects to match G H O S T and three G H and O were all covered. I met the requirements for G in Gecko Rouge. I'm actually looking for the project right now. Um, it's a mess. <laughs> Here, you're only seeing this up. The floor is totally covered. Um, yeah, because my son's furniture is also in here because his wall where the window was had to be cleared out. There's still work to do there, so the furniture is still in here. So anyways. G. Gecko Rouge. H. Hatter. O. Omri Koresh. That is Hatter by Omri Koresh. Charted by Gecko Rouge. This is the kit. It was a paper copy and I really want to get a digital copy because Pattern Keeper would really make this speed along. I um, guess I'll put that over there. And here's where it was last time you saw it. Here it is now. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I said that I didn't want to park anymore. Well, guess what? Sometimes that's all you can do. Um, I am working all of the parked threads in from this area over. And then I got to here and it's still pretty confetti and I couldn't take these threads 
all the way to their end. So they are reparked and hopefully I'll be able to finish those off. Um, I believe that's his finger there, I think. But, uh, yeah, long way to go, lots of work left to do. Can start, the teacup is probably about halfway done. Lots of confetti here in the plaid, lots of confetti here in this ruffle. It's just a lot of confetti. And I made the same mistake I made last time where I came to a page break. Over here, I was like, okay, work this thread up. Keep going above. Then I realized, nope. I was like 10 stitches too far this way, but it should have been this way. Like the page break is almost at this line, I believe, and I don't know why I counted way over there. These grid lines are not really helping me. I am not using them. I might use them as a um, verify yes. This is on this side of this grid line, but that's about it. Um, yeah. This is stitched on the 25 count pre-gridded linen, even weave, that came with the kit. That's where that is. pretty big project to show you right off the bat, but there you go. Um, I worked on that for quite a while. I mean, I'm sure you saw it the last video, and I think I've worked on it a couple days since then, so it might not have changed all that much since the last video. Who knows? Um, the next one in my pile, I'm just going to go by the pile instead of by the notes. I'm going to actually open this other notebook because sometimes I write other things in there. So, 24 hours acrostic, their acrostic is Cuckoo Alarm. And a lot of those I put down as, for C, I put Nora Corbett. See, um, the U, I don't think I've come up with anything for the U yet. C, Nora Corbett. K, Omri Koresh. O, Omri Koresh. O, Omri Koresh. A, I have two written down here. That is Adele Sessler for Beloved. Or Alice. L, I have... Lavender Linen for Dressmaker, which I should have picked up within the last couple days, but I did not. Did I tell you what day it is? I don't think I did. It is Saturday, October 24th. So, yeah, Dressmaker was supposed to be worked on, but I didn't yet. Um, a... Adele Sessler for Alice again, R. Gecko Rouge, and M. Mirabilia. So, basically I can get away with doing that for working on four or five projects. Hatter being one of them, which I did do a lot of. Uh, beloved. Um, And any Mirabellia will cover Nora Corbett. So Dressmaker's Daughter, that would be one project covering all of that. But, 
for spooky stitches for the magazine challenge spooky stitches I had a hard time coming up with that I'll show you that one in a minute that was the theme the acrostic ghost GHO I showed you S S is sunflower fairy <clears throat> this is where it was last time you saw it. This is also from a magazine because of the magazine challenge. And it's Nora Corbett, Sunflower Fairy. This is um, designed all for Valdani threads. I don't have these Valdani threads. So I just went to my stash of polar dyes and converted. So. I want to see where it's at. Well, I'm going to be honest, I only picked it up last night. So, not a lot of progress. Let me make this nice and tight. There it is. Just looking to see if I have something to put behind here. There's where it is so far. Now, back when I bought the magazine, I'm not a huge Sunflower fan, so this did not appeal to me. This year, Something happened with Sunflower, which makes me go, yeah, I really want to stitch that now. And it didn't really occur to me when I started stitching it a month ago. But when I picked it up this time, it was like, oh, you know what? It makes this year, it really suits this year. So I should work on it more, try to have it finished in 2020. Here's why. I, I, like I said, I'm not a fan of sunflowers. I think they're giant brown and yellow flowers that don't really appeal to me. But we bought this house and in buying this house we became more financially free. And so we bought a side-by-side. -side. This is a off-road vehicle, which is, it's like a quad with a bench seat, I guess you could say. So we were out turn about all summer. And one of the things that we came across is in on one of the back roads. It's it's a, it's a back road, so it's not a lot of traffic. And we were coming out, coming to an intersection onto a busier road. onto a busier road and as we came to this intersection there was a sunflower growing in the road. A dirt road but a sunflower. I 
we stopped for the intersection. I looked at my husband and I was like, that was a sunflower. And he was like, no. I said, yeah. He's like, where? And so we backed up and we got pictures of it. It's not very tall. It's only like two feet tall. But sure enough, it was a sunflower. So a couple weeks later, I told my husband, you know, that's a darn hardy, one darn hardy sunflower. We need to get seeds off of it. And we went back and it was gone. It was like pulled out of the road or something. So anyways, 2020 sunflower, Nor Corbett, sunflower fairy. <laughs> I gotta make it work. Gotta work on it, cause that was our summer. Yeah. So there's that. Um, the next one that I'm gonna pull out of the pile. Let's go with Alice because got quite a bit done. I'm not going to take it out of the Q-snap. But I'll show you what I can. Here's where it was before. Here's what it's supposed to look like. And here's where I am. So the bottom is entirely done. And I'm just working my way up the side and then I'll be working on the tree. And I should just take it out of Q-snap. And now there's people wandering around making noise, making me self-conscious. So this one I work on on my lunch hours, most days. So what else did I work on? I also worked on Beloved. This is a very old, beat up picture. This is what it's supposed to look like. Beloved by Adele Sessler, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Here's where it was the last time you saw it. Quartz. Quartz. Old ready threads. And here's where it is. Now, ta-da, nearly a page finish, no, sorry, there is a page finish, nearly the whole row finished. The page finish happened over here somewhere and there's another page over here and a little tiny bit. And this is the bottom. So all I have to do is fill in that bit 
and then I will roll it up go back over here and work my way across again I've done probably about six about 600 stitches a week is I think what I'm averaging right now when I am uh, going to work it's a sit down and stitch for 15, 20, 30 minutes and then get ready for work so that usually ends up I've, I think I average about 100 stitches on a work day and then the weekend comes and I can get about three or four hundred stitches in before we start doing stuff. We tend to procrastinate when we have to do stuff. So, that's beloved. Now, that covered the A's for Alarm for the Adele Sessler. Part. Now, there's also the Spooky Stitches um, challenge in the magazine challenge. I forgot to show you something. Sorry. That one will have to wait just a little bit more because I also worked on just for one day. Crystal Christmas. It has been languishing for too long. I need to get this done. I've started it. I don't even know when. I have it written down somewhere. About the same time as Beloved. Beloved and this are probably close to the same age. I really need to get this one finished because it's not that far. Um, I will insert a picture here of what it's supposed to look like. And of what it did look like last time. I showed you. And here it is now, still on the Q snap because I should work on it some more. This is Crystal Christmas by Mirabilia. And I worked on this guy right over here. Worked on some more on the scarf and up here a little bit. It's mostly whites and topes that I worked on. Yeah, there you go. Here, let me move this page and then you'll see the white. Maybe not. Don't know what they're doing. I'm sure everybody's fine. So there is him to finish, and then another girl over here, and then there's some words along the bottom. And then it's finished. Beads, of course. A ton of beads. And then it'll be finished. And 
Yeah, that one I should focus on more. I have a really hard time uh, getting comfortable to stitch with that one, partly because the fabric is so loose. You can see the lines when I when I'm stitching up and down or stitching side to side. I have to be very careful with my tension because it's such a loose fabric. And I believe that is 32 count Belfast linen in white, which was the called for, I believe. So, now, what I was saying earlier is that the monthly magazine challenge group had a theme for October, of course, spooky stitches. Start something from a magazine that fits the theme, spooky. I did have Nora Corbett's Halloween Fairy, but it's like finished. I just need to fix the moon and then it's finished. So I really, I could have cheated and used that and do the moon and then be done with it. And I only have like a week until Halloween. It's not going to get framed and up and um, I don't expect anybody to show up here. So, I picked B, a bee, a bumblebee, well, a honeybee, because it's a honeycomb. Because uh, imagine the earth without bees is awful scary. This is from July 2000 Stitchers World magazine. And that's what it's supposed to look like. I really misjudged the size of it. And looking at the template, it's like that's the actual size of the template. That's the actual size. That's the real size. Still didn't comprehend. It's big. I think, yeah, here's the template. So, I had to pin this to my fabric, draw the outline, and then fill it in with honeycomb stitch. Which, I have another little grape about. I, I am very frugal with my threads. I try to be. I also like to try to do it the way they tell me to do it. So it says to do a ringed back stitch. I'm going to show you the instructions. This is just how to do a stitch. I'm pretty sure I'm not making any, breaking any copyright rules. So basically, you do a back stitch, right? You do your back stitch and then you come back, turn it over, and then you back stitch along it again to join it up to make that shape. But you are supposed to, on the straight parts, you are supposed to stitch it again. So you stitch it twice here, twice at the top, twice at this side, twice at the bottom, where you have all these rows. I did that. I did that. I used Petite Treasure Braid PB35 
And that's what's left of the second card. And that is after I stopped doing that. So on the back, I will show you the back. I'll show you the back first so that you can see how much was used doing it the way it's supposed to versus just backstitch and then go and fill in those little spaces after, which is what I ended up doing after. So here's the back. You can see how much was used here versus here. Want to see the front? See if it made a difference? There's the front. Put it so that uh, that dark image is not there, but uh, you cannot tell where. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Get you this being a jerk. So, like I was saying. I don't think it made that much difference and honestly if I kept on going that way I'm sure I would have run out of this as well. So the other thing that I did um let's drop that. Okay. I'll just leave this up here for you to look at. Lighting is not great, but uh, that's big. Look how big that is. Kitchen, what are you doing? No. This is supposed to be a pin cushion. That's one giant pin cushion. So it called for Krynik number eight grade and I looked in my stash and I had number four braid and number 16 braid at 16 braid is a huge and the four braid I thought it's not going to be Quite the same effect, I thought. So I went digging through my kitted up projects, just thinking, I wonder. And sure enough, in one of them, there was a spool of braid. I believe it's eight. And the color on it is 3200 ombre. Now, it's not 32, but I don't know if Krynik just changed the numbering system. I don't know. All I know is it's very close to the 32s that I did have. As a matter of fact, here they are. So that's what I used. And that is supposed to be a specialty stitch called a Cretan stitch. And I don't know if I did it right, because mine doesn't look the same as hers. I think mine 
are longer, sorry, shorter than hers. And I used two strands of Whisper Black 99 for those legs. The body itself is just two strands of DMC worked with a seed stitch and then a satin stitch over top of that for the puffy effect. There it is. A start and a finish. And this took most of my time. This was three weeks almost exclusively. Even when there was company here. My brother in law was here on a hunting trip and they stopped in a couple times and I sat in the chair. I worked on that. Blasted honeycomb pattern. There it is. Now I just need to figure out how to finish it. I have a couple ideas. One second. Okay. So here are my ideas on how to finish the honeycomb bee, the giant honeycomb bee. So my original thought, did I have an original thought? No. Just wanted to do it. So I did it. And now it's massively big. So what I pictured originally was something along this. There's some birds outside, so. Um, I made this one quite a while ago. And this is kind of what I envisioned the B one to look like. This is actually a tin can from tuna, probably. This is a band that I made the width to fit it. Stuffed it, stuffed a piece of fabric with a bunch of batting and crammed it in there and I'm pretty sure it's glued down. So this is kind of what I was envisioning and they're all pushed down because they were in a box. I was envisioning something similar to this. This is too big for any can that I know of. That's a big can. Um, so that might work if I really puff out the top. But that was not really part of the idea. Then I saw, and I thought, I have this pretty little pedestal for um, candles. I don't use candles. I am sensitive to scents and perfumes, so no, not a lot of candle burning going on here. But number one, this would be by a sewing machine, really this got knocked over smash not great but also I don't know how well it would fit it's pretty close 
It's actually not that bad. So maybe, maybe the pretty pedestal. Other things that I have around the house, another pedestal, another not a pedestal, candle thing. Maybe if I put it on the top of this, it's almost the right dimension, but that's pretty, pretty thick. I could put like a yellow fabric inside to line this, maybe, and have this on the top. Maybe, maybe. And while I was filming and I looked over there, I saw these two things sticking out of a box. And I thought this would be perfect, but not quite big enough. I would only want to cover the inside, so too small, and this which is kind of dirty. This is almost the right size. might have a winner here. All I've been using this thing for is just a pretty silver silver bowl. I've just been using it to collect <sighs> treasures, beading accessories, bumblebee, <laughs> pin cushion. Um, this might be the winner. So I will see about assembling this with this, turning it into a pincushion, a giant pincushion. So that's what I worked on. I did get some happy mail. I have a few things, a few things that I one thing I wasn't really, I kind of given up on getting it, and things that I forgot that I ordered, and still no fabric. And I can't remember where all this stuff came from, who got what, oh. I needed some B5200, some DMCs for the reindeer, and stinky dies for the embroidery scissor, sewing scissors that I'm stitching by filigram. Got the dinky dies. Now that I don't need it. And I got the DMCs as well. Which I do need. While I was arranging my Mirabilia and Nora Corbett stash a while ago, I thought that I had a pattern. Turned out I didn't. I kind of told Sarah that I would stitch it with her. I don't think she started it yet. But I thought, well, I better get it if she ever really wants to start it with me. Um, 
See, I have April's Opal Fairy or Diamond Fairy or something like that, and I was mistaking it for Dia the Garden Fairy. Well, now I have a Dia the Garden Fairy. I'm not a fan of yellow. And all the yellow. But I am considering doing a conversion to shades of red. She's got pink roses. Maybe. And with that, I also got. Stone roses. And somebody is doing a wonderful conversion of this to actual to color. So it's not a statue, stone statue. But those actually look very similar. So anyways, I don't know when I'm going to stitch that. Now, I can't remember what came in what package after that. Um, yeah, those two were together and then I think these three were together from a seller online, stash unloading, dangerous place to be, Gloriana by Just Nan. Flowering Crown by Just Nan. And how appropriate for Halloween, Ghost Banner by Alessandra Adelaide. I have Spider Banner. I didn't even know about Ghost Banner. It's only copyrighted this year. And I got it on stash and load. My sister, I gave, I had two copies of Spider Banner. I gave her one. She finished it within weeks. Spider Banner. Now I have Ghost Banner. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I told you that I got uh, part two and three of the Victoria Sampler Gifts of the Magi. And that was gifted to me by a friend because she saw that I ordered part one on stash and load. I honestly thought this was going to not show up, be lost in the mail, I lost my money, whatever. But there it is. Frankincense. So now I have to find time and fabric to stitch all of those. I also got Menagerie by the Drawn Thread. And this picture it really doesn't do it justice, I'm sure, because it is uh, quite muted. Quite muted there. That's all the stash. That is all the haul. I had this pulled out because I almost, almost started another project because Caroline, off the grid, starting up beautiful flowers or whatever it is, the Jeanette Douglas blooming bouquets. Sal, that's going on. 
I pulled it out and I stopped. Started my B and don't think I can handle another start right now. This is a big one, so not right now. So that's it. I don't know how long I've been talking, but it's been a long time. I'm gonna have to go edit this now and so I'm gonna have to stop talking. So I know my husband thinks that I am ill because I'm not stitching. I have very dry hands. I had to put greasy stuff on them so I couldn't stitch. So now I'm gonna go wash my hands and stitch. I might even help him do some of that stuff over there. Until next time, it should only be a couple weeks. Might be three, might be four, but I hope it's only two. That's going to be a crazy time. Yeah. So, stay safe. Keep on stitching. Stitch whatever you like. Join all the cells. Don't join the cells. Whatever. Buy all the stuff. Don't buy all the stuff. Don't drive yourself broke trying to keep up with everybody. Um, just do what you can. Be happy. Talk to you next time. Bye.